Okay, so if I had some, fu some function y equals 5, and I were to graph this, it would simply be a horizontal line through 5. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Okay, so here my slope is zero. So that means the derivative of a constant is zero because I'm finding the slope of a horizontal line. All right, so a lot of these are pretty pretty straightforward. The last couple, they take a little more, but really it's not that bad. Okay, so if I were to do the derivative of three, graphically the slope dy dx is going to be zero because this would just be a line y equals three. And I'm going to mix in this notation dy dx, ddx, f prime, y prime. I'm going to mix those in because we're going to use all different types. Okay, and you start to recognize that it simply means the same thing. It's just written differently. Okay, power rule. This is a good one. Okay, this one will help you out a lot. Okay, so this looks messier. I don't know, but ddx meaning the operation is what I think of it as. So d dx of some x raised to the n power simply becomes n times x raised to the power of n minus 1. So if we had, say, x cubed. So if y equals x cubed. If I want to find y prime, I'm simply going to bring the 3 down. So it becomes 3x, 3 minus 1. So 3x squared would be my derivative function. Great. Does this still work for y equals x cubed plus x squared? x cubed in the exponent? or? I know, but like x cubed plus 1 or x cubed plus 1. Okay. Yep, we'll get to that. Okay. So the derivative of this with the power rule, you simply bring the power out front and use it as multiplication and subtract 1 from the exponent. That's all you're doing. Okay. So this is called the power rule. Multiply by that n and then subtract 1 from the exponent. Constant multiple rule. So this is different than the constant rule. So a constant multiple would be like C, some number, times U. We're going to start to see a lot of U and V. In calculus, they like to use U and V to represent functions. So instead of just saying F of X or Y of X, they're actually going to use U or they'll use V to represent. Okay. So you can think of, really, this would be like a u of x function. Constant multiple rule says we can simply bring the constant out front. Okay, so if it was 5x squared, we would bring the 5 out and just do the derivative of x squared. Okay, so to if a differentiable function u of x is multiplied by a constant, then its derivative is multiplied by the same constant. So basically what I said, but if you want to see it written out completely. So if I had the function 7x squared, my constant multiple rule says I can bring the 7 out, and then I'm only finding the derivative of x to the fourth. I don't do anything with the 7. It just comes along, and then I have some multiplication where I can mix it back in. So what is the derivative of x to the 4th? 4x cubed. Bring the 4 out front, subtract 1 from the exponent. So now I have 7 times 4x cubed, so my final derivative would be 28x cubed. Okay, so that's what the constant multiple lets us do. 
Okay, we have that number. We can just bring the number out, find the derivative of the function piece, and then combine it back together. All right, subtraction and addition. Just like when we were doing limits, where if we had two functions that were being added or subtracted, we could take the limit of each and then add or subtract those numbers. Same thing with derivatives. If we are adding or subtraction, subtracting two functions and we want to find the derivative, we simply do the derivative of each piece. Okay? I wrote this all as, as one step, but don't get intimidated by what it looks like. All I'm saying is if I have f of x plus g of x, becomes the derivative of f of x plus the derivative of g of x. Or if I have f of x minus g of x. So it's not a plus minus as in like x squared equals 1. It's not plus minus on that. Okay? This plus minus is if I do it once and I add, I'm adding them together. If I do it once and I subtract, I'm subtracting them. Okay? This can also be written using the prime notation. So this is really f prime of x plus g prime of x, or f prime of x minus g prime of x. Okay, so that notation means the same thing. Okay, prime means the derivative. d dx of f of x means the derivative. We can also write it this way. So my functions are u and v, and I'm adding two functions together. I can say, well, du dx, that's the derivative of u with respect to x, plus dv dx, derivative of v with respect to x. Or I could do it as subtraction. Okay, these two forms are all based on the discovery of calculus. There's two, two people that they've credited with the discovery of calculus, and they can't determine who actually discovered it first. And so one of them used the du dx, dv dx, and the other one used the prime as their notation. Okay? That's the only reason those are, those are different. But again, they mean the same thing. Okay, so Brady, this gets to your question. Now, if I have addition going on, so if I have 2x plus x to the fourth, that tells me that I can take the derivative of the first piece, and actually, my constant multiple lets me do it as I bring the 2 out, and this is the derivative, the derivative with respect to x of x plus the derivative with respect to x of x to the fourth. We'll look at that x to the fourth one. What's the derivative of x to the fourth again? 4x cubed. What is the derivative of x? I hear 2 and I hear 1. Just the derivative of x. The derivative of x is 1. Okay? And you can think of that. The, the line y equals x is that diagonal line going through the origin. The slope of that line is 1. Okay? Or you could use your power rule. This is really x to the first. So we bring that down, it becomes 1x raised to the 0 power. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so it's 1 times 1, so we still get 1. Okay? But then we have that 2 for our constant multiple, and so it's 2 times 1, so just 2. So our derivative of 2x plus x to the 4th is 2 plus 4x cubed. Okay, now they start, we got two more rules, and they get a, a little more specific. So the first one we're going to talk about is the product rule. So again, if we're multiplying two functions together, then we want to take the derivative of that product. So if I have two functions, u and v, my derivative, d dx, is going to be u times dv dx plus v times du dx. 
or if we wrote it with prime notation, it would be u times v prime, v times u prime. The most important thing with this formula, formula, you have to keep these pairs together. u v prime, v u prime. Those have to be paired up together. You cannot do u times v and then u prime times v prime. Can't do that. Those have to stay together. Does not matter if you did it as v u prime plus u v prime. That would still work. 5 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 5. Addition is commutative. Okay? Doesn't matter, but you have to keep those pairs together. Do not separate those. So that's the biggest thing with product rule. It's staying organized that it's u times v prime, v times u prime. Okay, and all this means is u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Okay, if you want to write that down, you can write that down, but it's, that's what I'm saying. All, it, all I'm doing, if I have a product, two functions are being multiplied together, and I want to find the derivative of that product, I can split it up, u dv dx, v du dx, or with the prime notation. All right, so let's do one with the product rule. Find f prime of x, so I'm trying to find the derivative, given that f of x is the function x squared plus 1 times x cubed plus 3. So the first thing I have here is identify what your u and v are. And I do this, I just make a little, little scratch work here on the side. I say, okay, u, I'm going to call this u and this v. So u is my x squared plus 1. What is u prime going to be? 2x, okay? Because x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of 1, the derivative of a constant is 0. And then v, I know, is x cubed plus 3. What is v prime going to be? Three x, 3x squared plus 0. So just 3x squared. So now I'm going to go back, and I know my derivative is u v prime plus v u prime. I always do it like this every single time. I always do u v prime plus v u prime. I told you you can go back and forth as long as your pairs stay together, but I think it's easier if you just pick one strategy and stick with it that you know every single time it's u v prime v u prime, and then you won't get mixed up which one to use or mix something up along the way. So every single time I do u v prime plus v u prime. All right, so with this, I just start filling in what I know. Well, u is x squared plus 1. v prime was 3x squared plus my v, which is x cubed plus 3, plus my u prime, which is 2x. So I'm just following my roadmap. What my product rule states. Now I can do some simplifying. I'll just start distributing through. So this would become 3x to the fourth plus 3x squared. And I can do it on this side too if I distribute the 2x in. So plus 2x cubed plus 6x. Oh, that's not 2x cubed, that's 2x to the fourth. All right, so 3x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2x to the fourth plus 6x. I can combine like terms. My 3x to the fourth and 2x to the fourth would be 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 6x, and I'm done.
right? There's no foil going on because there's no bino there's not two binomials. Oh, from the very start. Yes. 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 So you could have foiled right here from the very start. Could have foiled those together and then done the power rule on every single one. Yes, you would have got the same answer. Okay. But there's gonna be some that are not set up nice like this. Okay, but I'm glad you brought that up because that is, you could do that. You can do some simplification before you do the derivative. Oftentimes, they'll make things easier. It doesn't work every time, but that's good. I'm glad you caught that, Zach. Okay, the next one is called the quotient rule. Yikes. Okay, so I'll give you a second to write this down and then... We'll talk about it. This one, order is important. You can see in the numerator, there's subtraction going on. Okay? 5 minus 2 is not the same as 2 minus 5. It has to be in this order. Okay? So u divided by v, and we're trying to take the derivative of that, is v du dx minus u dv dx all divided by b squared. Or you can write it in the prime notation, v times u prime minus u times v prime all over v squared. All right. This one You'll do it enough that you'll start to start to remember it, but this one has the most going on that you have to be careful that you're doing it properly. Okay, so to help you remember, this is not something I came up with. It's actually something that somebody else came up with, and a lot of people use this, okay, into college, other math teachers. To remember the quotient rule, you can say this as a little jingle or whatever, however you can remember it. Low d high, so low means the denominator of my quotient, so the v. d high means the derivative of the high, so low d high minus high, which is my numerator, my u, d low, all over low squared. Low d high, high d low, low d high, high d low, okay? And it has to be in that order. It cannot be high d low low d high, it has to be low starts out, low d high, high d low, okay, and it's all over that low squared, that is the quotient rule. Okay, so low D high, high D low, all over low squared. All right, so let's actually do one. F prime of X, or find F prime of X, if F of X equals X squared minus one, all over X squared plus one. All right, so on these, again, I would determine what my u is and what my v is. Okay, so following that pattern, u is my numerator, v is my denominator. So u is x squared minus 1, v is x squared plus 1. So what is u prime? 2x. What is V prime? 2x again. Okay. So my derivative is my low. So V times derivative of the high minus my high times my derivative of the low all over low squared. All right. This is exactly how I do it. I make the little U's and V's, U prime, V prime, and then I rewrite the formula. And so then I just have to substitute in. Okay, so I don't get myself mixed up. I'm doing it in the correct order. So I'm just going to fill in. So V is X squared plus 1. U prime is 2X minus. Now with this subtraction, 
And I always make a big set of parentheses because I'm subtracting all the stuff that I'm going to have after it. All right, so this becomes u, which is x squared minus 1, times v prime, which is 2x, all over v squared, which is x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Okay, and use parentheses on this denominator because that entire quantity that's being squared. It's not x squared plus 1 squared. It's x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Right? And then you don't have to FOIL that out. You don't have to expand that. You can just leave it as x squared plus 1 squared. So up top, I'll do my distributing. So this becomes 2x cubed plus 2x. And then I'm going to leave my subtraction here. And then I'm only going to focus on that big set of parentheses. Okay? And I'm going to start another set. So 2x times x squared is my 2x cubed minus 2x all over x squared plus 1 squared. So my numerator, 2x cubed plus 2x. If I distribute in, it's negative 2x cubed plus 2x. So that's why I use all those parentheses so I don't mix up my signs, mess up my signs as I'm progressing through. Okay, I simply don't write it as negative 2x cubed and then minus 2x when really it's a minus of a minus. All over x squared plus 1 squared. I can see that these 2x cubes are opposites of each other. And so on the numerator, I only have 2x plus 2x, which is 4x, all over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. That is the derivative. Okay, so you have to follow that quotient rule pattern Determine what your u, your u prime, v, v prime, determine all that stuff to come up with your final derivative. Okay, let's talk about horizontal tangents. What does it mean to have a horizontal tangent? What is... What would it look like, I guess, a horizontal tangent? Okay, what would you say, Brady? Slope of, zero. slope of zero. Okay, slope equals zero, which is also meaning my derivative equals zero. Okay. Does the curve y equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 2 have any horizontal tangents? And we're going to determine where they're at if there are horizontal tangents. Okay, so, to, so if there is a horizontal tangent, it's where my derivative equals zero. So I need to figure out what my derivative is. Let's use the other notation. Let's go dy dx. It's called Leibniz notation. He was one of the founders of calculus. Leibniz. So dy dx is going to be the derivative of x to the fourth, so ddx of x to the fourth minus 2 ddx of x squared plus ddx of 2. So you can see on that middle term, I already brought that constant out because the constant multiple, 2 times x squared, the 2 is not going to change. The x squared is the only thing I can take the derivative of. So my constant multiple lets me bring the 2 out, and then I'm simply taking the derivative of x squared. Okay, so d dx of x to the fourth. What's the derivative of x to the fourth? 4x cubed. Minus 2 times what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. Okay, don't forget the x. So I have 2 times 2x. What's the derivative of 2? 0. All right, so this becomes 4x cubed minus 4x. That is my derivative. Now, when they ask about horizontal tangents, I'm going to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. 
right? This one I could do some factoring. I can factor out a 4x, and so that becomes x squared minus 1. So therefore, what will my values of x be that will get me 0 as an output? 0, what else? Plus and minus 1. Okay. So, on a coordinate axis, if x is 0, or x is 1, or x is negative 1, I will have a horizontal tangent, which means my original graph is going to have these curves going on, and it's either going to be at a high point or a low point where these curves are happening at. That's where my derivative equals 0. Okay, f prime of x, if f of x is 1 over x cubed. Let's think about this one. So kind of like when Zach was saying, can we do a little bit of work ahead of time before we do the derivative to make it a little bit easier? Could I rewrite this function with a negative exponent? What would it be? Ah. So now I can use power rule because x to the negative third, I don't have to use quotient rule. Okay, what is the derivative of x to the negative third power? Negative 3x to what? Zach, you had it, but negative what? Not squared. We subtract 1 from the exponent. So that negative 3 goes to a negative 4. Okay? Well, we should not have negatives in a final answer. So now how do I rewrite this with positive exponents? What's going to be my numerator? Negative 3, what's going to be my denominator? x to the fourth. Okay? So if you have one that's pretty straightforward like this, you can bring that denominator up, make it a negative exponent, do your power rule, but then final answer, rewrite it with positive exponents. So negative 3 all over x to the fourth would be our derivative. Last one. Okay. You do. See what you can come up with for... Your derivative specifically at this point. So again, we identify our u and v. So I'm going to say u is x squared plus 3, v is 2x. So u prime would be 2x, v prime would be just 2. Okay? Low d high, high d low. So low, derivative of the high, minus my high, derivative of the low all over low squared. So I'll have 2x times u prime, which is 2x, minus my u, which is x squared plus 3, times v prime, which is 2, all over 2x squared. And be careful here. Write it as 2x quantity squared. Do not write it just as 2x squared with the, the squared on the x. It's the whole quantity that's being squared. Okay, so got about that. Okay, here we go. We'll finish up this one. So now we can simplify the numerator, and so this becomes four x squared. And then, like I said, I like to use parentheses, so this is two x squared plus 6, but it's all in my parentheses, all over quantity 2x squared. So now it's 4x squared minus 2x squared, so that becomes 2x squared minus 6, all over 2x squared. So this is the derivative function. We are not done yet. They want us to evaluate it at the point 1, 2. So what I'm pulling from this is they want me to evaluate when x is 1. So we can write this as f prime of 1. We could also write it as dy dx 
this big vertical bar x equaling one. So that's the same means the same thing but different notation. So f prime of one, we could also say dy dx. This big vertical bar at x equaling one. When I actually evaluate this, it would be two times one squared minus six all over two times one quantity squared. So this would be two minus six divided by four. Negative four divided by four is a negative one. So after all that work, what does negative one mean? What's that number actually mean? Slope of the tangent line at the point one, two. So if I were to graph this, I don't really know what it looks like, but I know at the point one, two on my curve, might look something like this. On my curve there, I'll have a slope of a tangent line, which is negative one. So all that work is simply telling me the exact slope of the tangent line at the point x equaling one. Okay, so 3.3 in Math Excel, due Sunday by midnight. Tomorrow will be a work day though in class. And so for that 35 minutes in class, 